All right, everybody, welcome back to another podcast. Today, we're going to explore the idea of toxic masculinity. What is it with the rise of the red pill, the alpha male culture, and the Andrew Tates of the world, and these incels? What is toxic masculinity? What can we learn from it? Does it even exist? If it does, what is it? Sorry, phone went off. If it does, what is it defined by and what is it not defined by? Is the media lying to us about toxic masculine traits? All these different things. I want to just first address the reason why I think that this topic is so important is because I believe that men are suffering. Men are suffering a lot. Our depression rates are the highest that they've ever been. Suicide rates are the highest they've ever been. It seems that a lot of a lot of boys don't understand what being a man is and they're causing a lot of trouble and there's so much turmoil going on in men's lives that we need to fix it. And the way that I think that we fix it is we do have a standard for how men should act, how men should act in public, how they should um, contribute to society. This is super important. It's integral. Why are men committing most violent crimes? Why are men doing the things like sexual abuse or why are they shooting up schools? Why are men causing so many issues? I have a lot of different theories on this in in terms of I think that feminism is one thing that really killed masculinity, modern feminism. However, I don't blame it on feminism. I don't blame the lack of masculinity in society on feminism. I think that that is a very weak trait for men to do is to blame the lack of masculine behavior on women and feminism. Because if men are to be masculine, then they will not falter and they won't stop being masculine due to women or or feminism. I think that's so weak when when men blame their problems on feminism and the rise of feminism. It's just, it's incredible. So I digress. I um I want about I want to talk about toxic masculinity. I want to talk about some points that I found on a website. I'm currently on a website called auroranddorg.uk and it is the top 10 masculine or top 10 toxic masculinity behaviors. I want to go over that, talk about what it is, you know, maybe hit some points. And then I want to talk about what I truly think toxic masculinity is, okay? So these are the points. I'll probably only read over a few of them, um, and we'll go from there. So number one is being stoic. Men are constantly given the message that they must be self-reliant, independent, physically tough, etc. Men are told that to be this way will make them successful in terms of business, society, and finding a partner. Being vulnerable will cause men to be ridiculed. There's a lot there. There's a lot to actually address. Number one I don't think that men are ever told that they'll be ridiculed if they are vulnerable. I think most leaders online, most people who are talking about masculinity are actually telling men to be vulnerable, but to be vulnerable in the right circumstances and with the right people. Being vulnerable to a man is very important. However, it should be done around people that you can trust. Maybe a group of guys that you trust or a best friend or, you know, older men, people that can actually empathize and sympathize with what you're going through. The problem is, is that in society, men are told that we need to handle things like women handle them. We need to go to therapy. We need to talk about our feelings to our partner, maybe our girlfriend or our wife or whatever. And more times than not, I'm not going to go into specifics why that doesn't really work out. It just doesn't work out. Men don't want people to be sympathetic towards them. Men want empathy, somebody that can actually put themselves in your shoes, somebody that can relate to the problems that you have. Most men that I talk to don't want to be told, I'm really sorry that you're going through that from somebody who can't even relate to what they're going through. So being stoic, I think being stoic is so important in men for a couple of reasons. Being stoic isn't being stoic in every single portion of your life. Nobody's telling men to be stoic and to not laugh with other people or to not, you know, show some sort of emotion when like a parent dies or something like that. The point of being stoic and the reason why stoicism has become so important is because men are being told, men are being overly told, uh, how do I say this? The reason why stoicism for the reason why stoicism for men has become so important and so prominent is because for so long now men have been told to be over emotional emotional men 
make emotional decisions. Emotional men make emotional problems. They make a lot of problems. You can see that time and time again, school shooters and all the violence that happens with men. Men who are stoic take a step back from the problem, they create a solution and they move forward. They don't just like talk shit to anybody that they see if there's a problem with them. They don't just like, you know, smash somebody's windshield or pop their tire or anything like that. So being stoic more so has to do with the fact of like, be stoic when problems arise so that you can make a proper decision. Nobody's telling men to be stoic at all times and not laugh about things or to not cry about things if they need to cry when they need to cry as long as it's in front of the right people. Or I'm going to keep coming back to that. Um, so yeah, being stoic is important. And look, um, being self-reliant as a man is super important. Being self-reliant as a man is super important because we are not, in general, men are not born with just inherent value that everybody recognizes. And it is what it is. It's just how the world works. It's not wrong. It's not right. Um, women are born with inherent value. We are told from a young age, treat ladies like they're princesses, right? Chivalry, things of that nature. Men don't have a standard that is that that is held for them in that way. So being self-reliant is very important because you guys have probably heard the quote, um, nobody's coming to save you. And that's true for a man, right? It's very, very small and minuscule the amount of times that maybe a very wealthy woman will pick up a man and then take care of him. And for most men, they're told you can handle this. So men do need to be self-reliant. It's, it's not a bad trait for anyone to be self-reliant, by the way. <clears throat> the second trait um, that they listed is being promiscuous. Typically, men will be praised by other men for sexual conquest. There's a well-known double standard regarding perceptions of male versus female promiscuity with men being praised by their peers and called studs while rejecting women who have multiple partners and branding them as sluts. Now, while I think that there is so many reasons for this double standard and the main reason for the double standard is, um, how do I say this? The main reason for that double standard when, when it comes down to it is, um, you know, is, is if a girl gets pregnant, if you have the idea, if, if not the idea, if you happen to get a girl pregnant, but she's been sleeping with a bunch of different guys, that's where the main issue lies there. Now, I don't think promiscuity for anyone is good. I don't promote promiscuity, but I don't think that we can also act like it's the same on both sides. You know, I think that the problem, the reason why I believe promiscuity is a toxic masculine trait is because the man who is promiscuous more times than not is seeking validation through women rather than himself and his peers. And that is a very toxic trait because a man that's looking for validation via women will do a lot of things to get that validation. He will probably screw over his homeboys in order to get that validation because at the end of the day the only thing that he's looking for is pussy and as long as he can get that he's going to do whatever it takes and it doesn't matter the amount of people that he screws over along the way as long as he gets his end goal so promiscuity i actually agree here that that's an issue being violent is listed as a toxic masculine trait statistically men commit significantly more violent crime than women there are numerous reasons for this, but there are clear links between male instigated violence and the need men have to use aggression and violence to prove their masculinity and bolster confidence in their masculine identity. <clears throat> Is violence a toxic masculine trait? I guess it depends on why their violence is happening, right? But is violence inherently a toxic masculine trait? I don't believe so. Again, this comes down to the fact that we are we we have an innate feeling of aggression in our in us men let me let me let me put it this way why i don't think violence is a toxic masculine trait is because we are told that we need to suppress our aggression and that feeling feeling feelings of violence is a bad thing and this is where the shame comes in for men is that you're told what you're feeling is wrong you need to change it you shouldn't be violent you shouldn't be angry you shouldn't have aggression rather than hey there are outlets for this there are proper ways to express this aggression and to express the violence that you are feeling that aggression is innate in our being it just is so rather than telling people 
suppress the aggression, put the anger down, don't be violent. You could tell somebody, go to the gym. That's a proper outlet. Go to an MMA gym. Take up boxing. Jiu-jitsu is super popular right now. There are ways that men can express this feeling and this need for something that, that seems to be wrong in very productive ways. This is not toxic masculinity. This is something that's innate in our nature. And to tell people that it's wrong that they feel this way is toxic in itself. There sh you should not feel shame for something that you sometimes cannot control. That's like, it, it, we, won't, we won't even go there. That, we won't even go there. But being violent just to be violent, for the most part, happens with men. This is going back to the stoicism part, right? Like being violent, the toxic trait of being, vi the masculine toxic trait of being violent typically comes from men who are over emotional, that aren't stoic, that are too vulnerable, right? They have suppressed their emotions so much. They haven't found a proper outlet for it that now they need to take it out because it's built up so long in them because everybody's told them that expressing your aggression and the feeling for violence in a, an appropriate way is bad. You need to feel shameful that you feel aggressive and violent. So now it builds up for so long and they do something outrageous. That is the toxic masculine trait. And that's the toxic trait that we are told by society to do. Anger's wrong. Aggression's wrong. Don't express it. No, you should express your aggression and you should express your anger, especially if you're a man, in an appropriate way. By the way, that's not just something that only men should do. If women are feeling angry, they're told, go to therapy. They're told to have all these different outlets, have a, have a girl's night out or whatever. But with men, we have to handle things again in the way that women handle things. This is wrong. This is totally wrong. Now, I'm going to go over like two more things, okay? Maybe three more things. Um, this one I'm going over because I think, candidly, it's outrageous. It's, it's, it's crazy that this is even listed. I can't believe that they listed this, but it says sexual aggression towards women. <clears throat> Men who conform to toxic masculinity standards are more likely to make sexual comments or sexist jokes to women, commit sexual harassment, accept rape myths, and behave as if they are entitled to women's bodies. Now, that absolutely would be a toxic masculine trait, for sure. However, how do we define this stuff, right? And where does, where does this even come from? Where is the statistics? Where is the statistics that, you know, <clears throat> that being being stoic is going to lead to sexual aggression towards women? Some things that I've seen before, too, is that, you know, going to the gym and taking care of yourself and eating healthy is now defined as a toxic masculine trait. So where are the statistics that show us that men who are in shape, men who have high level of confidence, men that, you know, um, men that are strong are sexually aggressive towards women. Where, where are the statistics for that? How do you even correlate the things? It's absolutely disgusting that they would put something like this in there. Now, if they would say certain things like, you know, um, <clears throat> men who, who watch too much porn or incels or something like that, they're more sexually aggressive towards women, then uh, by all means, I could, I could see that. But men who conform to toxic masculinity standards are more likely to do this stuff. They feel entitled to women's bodies. I, I'm not so sure about that. I don't agree with this whatsoever. Rape myths too? Like what, what are we talking about? What, like, where does, what? I, that, that's really all I have to say. Um, another toxic masculine trait, not displaying emotion. Emotion is treated as being a feminine characteristic. Stifling emotion is seen as true manliness. From childhood, males are shamed to conform with the standard that to show emotion is weak and feminine. I think that we can all agree that emotion is more of a feminine trait. And I think that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Being emotional is more of a feminine trait. There's a reason why people call men fe like feminine women. And there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with, with, with having emotion. However, there is a time and place for emotion, right? Especially as a man, especially if you are to be the person who is the leader of the household or the leader of a group, there's a proper way to show emotion. There's a proper place and there's proper people. I don't really know what's so wrong with that idea. Now, I think that if men are truly being told not to show emotion, not to express emotion in any way. Yeah, that's toxic, but that's not just toxic towards men. That's toxic towards anybody. If you're told to suppress your emotion completely, 
then yeah, that's toxic. It has nothing to do with masculinity. But again, men, right? If let's say, let's say a family member dies or something, right? If a family member dies and everybody in the family is being weak and emotional, and that's okay. I don't mean to say weak in like a bad way, but th there's a moment of weakness and everyone's being emotional. A lot of times people are looking towards the man as somebody to lean on, or if something goes wrong in life, a lot of times people are looking towards the man as somebody to lean on. And if the man is overly emotional in that moment, there's nobody to lean on. Typically, are we are typically we are looked at as leaders. And I think that that's great. There's nothing wrong with being looked at as the leader and having a moment of strength for everyone else around you to be weak so that they can lean on you. Now, if you're told that you can't be emotional at all, that is wrong. There's time for emotion. After everybody's leaned on you and you've taken some of that pressure, right? Be emotional by yourself. I think that's totally fine. Call a friend or, you know, um, call somebody that you trust and, and cry and let it out. I think that's totally acceptable. It is totally acceptable. But in moments of weakness where there's a lot of people looking to you for guidance or looking for you to be their strength, Maybe being emotionally in that moment, holding your emotions back is the right thing to do. And then letting yourself express your emotions and feel your emotions later on is more appropriate. Risk taking. I think that this, this is a good one. Connected to male dominance, toxic masculinity encouraged taking risks to demonstrate dominance. Men who buy into this are more likely to take extreme measures such as perpetuate violence, drive vigorously, drive dangerously, gamble, abuse drugs. I don't know how this makes any sense. This risk taking, when I look at it, are the people who start a business or go out of the nine to five or invent things. Risk taking, obviously gambling, abusing drugs and perpetuating violence. Sure. But that's not, again, that's not exclusive to the toxic masculine. That's not exclusive to the masculine in general. That's just, that's just bad behaviors that has nothing to do with toxic masculinity. That's just bad behaviors in general, things that you shouldn't be doing in the first place. If you're gambling and you're driving dangerously, you're perpetuating violence and abusing drugs, that's bad and you need to get that figured out. It has nothing to do with being masculine. But risk taking in the masculine sense is taking the chance to approach approach a girl that you are interested in. Risk taking is starting that business or quitting your job or, you know, lifting a little bit more weight. That's what risk taking really is or taking a chance on life like going going somewhere to meet somebody. That's what risk taking is. And people who take risks on average win more. They make more money because they have to take the risk. They're more happy because they fulfilled certain things in their life. This 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 is nonsense. This doesn't even make sense. So now that we've taken time to talk over what, you know, this website, whoever they are, um, deems as toxic masculinity. I think that we should actually talk about what, <clears throat> what I believe toxic masculinity really is or what, what, you know, toxic masculinity actually is. Um, so the number one trait I believe is this prioritizing pleasure over growth is a toxic masculine trait. I believe personally that the man who cannot put his pleasure aside in order to grow, in order to benefit the people around him, in order to benefit himself is a toxic masculine man. You're prioritizing because if you prioritize pleasure over growth, that means that you're not on your purpose. You don't, you're not willing to do things necessary in order to get to the next level in your life. And you're always going to stay the same. And to be honest with you, that's okay. You don't have to grow. But if you're the person that is looking for growth and looking for more in life and looking to be a leader, right, then put your, put, put your pleasures to the side and work on growth. If you want people to trust you more, if you want people to put you in higher positions, right, and this is something that that is that's crazy to me because the the culture now is so, like we see so many feminine men and a lot of those feminine men like they they believe that they're just owed things right they believe that they're just owed a good job or owed a good salary or owed you know food stamps whatever it is and they're not willing to work for it so they're putting their pleasures before it like there's so many examples that I can I can look to of men who 
who who like complain all day online. They're complaining all day online. Like there's one specific person that I'm thinking of. He complains all day online about his business and how it's not growing and it's not fair. And it's like, dude, you're a leader. You're a boss, right? You're supposed to like that is masculine in 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 nature, right? You're a leader. You're a boss. People rely on you, and you're saying how your your company is suffering, but at the same time. You show all the time you going out and you talk about how you wish there was a balance and so and how your company is suffering and those people are relying on you. And so if they see their boss complaining all the time online and then spending his money out on the weekends and showing it, you know, outwardly on the Internet, how are they supposed to look to you as any sort of stability? That's a very toxic masculine trait, somebody who's just putting pleasure over growth. <clears throat> the next thing that I believe to be a toxic masculine um, trait is whining about your problems all the time. This isn't meant to be, this isn't to say that, you know, talking about your problems isn't a good thing. You should talk and confide in people that you can trust about your problems. But if you're somebody who's just whining constantly about your issues and you're a man, that is a toxic masculine trait. The real, the, 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 the masculine, the masculine trait is to talk about your problems and problem solve, figure it out. If you are constantly whining about your problems, people won't come to you for advice. They won't lean on you. They won't trust that you're able to make decisions and to push forward. They're going to be like, man, that dude whines a lot. He doesn't have it figured out. That's toxically masculine. That's a very toxic masculine trait. All right. Now, one of the ones too is blaming others for your problems. This is a this 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 is such a problem with men. The virtue signaling and the freaking dude, the virtue signaling and the lack of accountability and responsibility that you see now in today's men is out of control. Blaming other people for your problems, blaming other people for the reason that you're broke, blaming other people for the reason that your business isn't doing well, blaming other people that your relationship isn't going well, blaming everybody but yourself. If you cannot take a look inside and project, and if you cannot take a look inside and see what is wrong with you rather than everyone else, I believe you to be a toxic masculine man. You're not looking for growth. You're not looking for a good life. You're just looking for handouts. You're looking for other people to solve your problems for you. That is a toxic masculine man. <clears throat> the last thing that I do want to touch on that I think is important is um, being overly emotional. I think the biggest, I think that the biggest Ma toxic mask. I think the biggest toxic masculine trait is being overly emotional. If you are somebody that cannot control your emotions, if you're somebody that can't take a step back, breathe and look at the issue objectively, and you always act on emotion, you are a toxic masculine man. Men should have it together enough to be able to take a step back, breathe figure out what the problems are and go from there. Emotional men, overly emotional men make emotional decisions and they make bad decisions. Overly emotional men will quit their job when somebody's too mean to them. Overly emotional men will punch somebody if they if they piss them off in 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 a matter of seconds. Overly emotional men will commit violence. Overly emotional men commit crimes. Men who don't have the ability to be a little bit stoic in their life and think about how can I solve this problem, feel their emotions, you know, acknowledge that they have the emotions, let it out in a productive way, and then deal with them are a problem. Those men are a big problem to society. Now, why do I think that this toxic masculine thing is, um, is such an issue, right? I think that in society, why do I think toxic masculinity is such a problem? I think that in society, we are told that we need to handle everything like women. 
that we don't need to handle things like men. And men are shamed for having feelings or emotions that are intrinsic to masculine nature. Men are told that you should, you should look at things this way and you should handle things this way because that's what the feminine would do. And that's a big problem. And I think that that creates toxic masculine men. You want to talk about men who hate women and femininity, keep telling them that they shouldn't deal with their emotions and the way that they feel in the way that they feel they should express them and tell them that they should express it in ways that the feminine expresses them. Trust me, we'll find more toxic masculine men. The men who aren't allowed to feel aggression, that aren't allowed to feel that they want to commit some sort of violence. And they, and the men who are told that that they can't do that stuff in productive manners, they will end up doing bad things. It happens time and time again. And so society, I think, tells us that we need to do things the way that the feminine does things. It tells us that feminism is right. And, you know, I'm not here to debate whether feminism is right or wrong or that even that it's a problem. I think that feminism isn't a problem in so much as masculinity isn't a problem. Feminism has their ideas and that's fine. Everyone's, in, you know, allowed to their ideas. Everyone's allowed to have their ideas and masculine men are allowed to have their ideas too. What becomes the problem is when the movement isn't actually for equality. It's for handle things the way that we would handle things and telling people how they should live their life as opposed to, Hey, this might be a value add to your life. Right. Um, and I think that, you know, men being told that they're toxic is also something that, that just really pro it's, it's, it's really probably not the way to go about it, right? It's probably not the way to handle whatever issue they're trying to handle. So, all right, guys, I was editing this video and I decided that I needed to jump back in and talk about what the toxic masculine is because I wasn't super happy with the way that I described it before. So I don't know if I'm going to delete all this stuff from before or if I'm going to keep it in. However, I wanted to talk about the toxic masculine. And so Nowadays, it's really, really popular to call men who are in shape, men that want to make a bunch of money, men that are competitive, men that like guns, men that like all the traditionally masculine things, to call them toxic. And although I do think that some of this stuff can be toxic, it's it depends on why you're interested in them, why you're interested in it, why you do it, all these, all these things, right? There's so many caveats to it. Now, who I really think the toxic masculine men are, though, are typically the men who are calling the other men toxic, right? I believe that overly emotional men are toxic because overly emotional men will make overly emotional decisions and they'll make really bad decisions. And when you, you know, just for anyone in general, if you make too many decisions from emotion, you can end up hurting a lot of people around you. And as men, it is my view that we are to be leaders and we are to be looking for ways to benefit everyone around us, not just us. And that requires you having a clear head and you being able to not make a bunch of really important decisions out of emotion. Now, of course, there's going to be caveats and there's going to be some idiot in the comments being like, aren't some uh, decisions made out of emotion good? Like, wouldn't you, don't you propose to a woman if you're emotional, whatever, stuff like that. Obviously, there's instances where you make emotional decisions and it turns out great. I've made a bunch of emotional decisions that turned out great. However, the caveat there is that if you have an idea that is from that came out of emotion, if you have an idea that came out of emotion, it's important to at least take a look at it and make sure that it's going to be of benefit to you and to the people around you. Make sure that it doesn't hurt other people. The issue becomes when you see all these idiots like the Antifas of the world and all these like crazy, you know, even proud boys and things like people like these on like on on extreme sides of the spectrum where they're creating violence and they're creating divide because they're making emotional decisions. They're getting mad about, let's say, political parties and then there's an uprise and there's a bunch of violence and there's a bunch of arguing because they're emotional about politics or they're emotional about sports. This isn't just a liberal or conservative thing. Emotional men make poor decisions. So taking, taking a step back and being able to look at things from a 30,000 foot view is the way that you avoid a lot of issues with decisions that you make, not just like making a snapshot decision in one second because somebody pissed you off or somebody has a different thing, a difference in idea than you do. That's one, that's one really toxic masculine trait that I think can happen no matter what side of the fence you're on. 
Now, being highly agreeable is another another trait that I think is really, really toxic. Being a highly agreeable man means that you'll say yes to almost anything. And you'll say yes to almost anything with little to no reward. I think that so many men are conditioned nowadays to just agree for the sake of agreeing. And this kind of goes back to a podcast that I that I did last week where it was, you know, these four things will change your life. And I like to speak to men a lot more because I can relate to men. I can empathize with men, right? And so being agreeable is is not always a bad thing, but being agreeable just to be agreeable is a bad thing. Most people just agree out of habit or they say yes out of habit. And this causes so many issues in the way that ideas don't get discussed or, you know, ideas don't get discussed or differencing of ideas don't get discussed. And then, you know, again, that 30,000 foot view thing where it's like, okay, this person's saying one thing, but what about this option? What about this option? Instead of looking at things from all different angles and creating a solution to a problem or maybe having other ideas that could benefit people more, they just say yes without even thinking about it. And again, that can cause so many problems. And I just, I believe as men that we are to be thoughtful and we are to be leaders and we are to take all all things into consideration before we make decisions rather than just agree to agree. Um, yeah. So I think that that's something that's, that's pretty important too. Um, just not being super agreeable all the time, right? Ah, man, men, men, men who don't want to make any money. And this is going to be a sore topic for a lot of people, but I believe that men who it doesn't mean it's not that you have to want to make a lot of money. I guess more so what the the problem is is men who don't want to push push forward or men that that don't have any goals or purpose or ideas, right? Um I think that men that don't have purpose lack so much in life in the way of you don't have a mission, so there's no way that you can really be a benefit to a, d- a direct cause, right? And the reason why purpose is so important for men is because I say this I say this so often, right? I use this exact example. Um, when you go and buy a stool at at a store, and you have to put it together as a man, it's so simple, it's so stupid, but you're like, I did that. I put that stool together. That was me. And so what that what that kind of shows is that men really thrive on having purpose. Men really thrive on creating. Men really thrive on on doing even something as simple as a stool, right? And when I bring that up to to the many men that I have, um everyone tends to agree with that notion, right? And so why I use that example so much is because I try to show other men like, hey, dude, you need to be creating something. You need to be on some sort of mission, some sort of path. When you're on some sort of path and mission, you're going you're going to be more fulfilled as a man. Do I have the exact answer as to why? No, I think there's something innate in us that wants to be on purpose and on mission. And when you're on purpose and on mission, you tend to not deter from the path. You tend to not get distracted and distracted men are very, very dangerous. Distracted men are the ones who cheat, the ones who steal, the ones who who end up effing other people over because they don't really have a higher purpose or a higher uh, a being to answer to, right? And that's why I think believing in God is so important with men too, um, so that you do virtuous things, so that you do the right things for other people. You make good decisions. So, you know, I guess that I'll leave you guys with that one. Men that don't have purpose or aren't on purpose. I think that that's a very toxic masculine trait because it comes with so many other things, right? If you don't have a purpose, the likelihood that you're doing more degenerate things, right? Like drinking, stealing, lying, doing drugs and all this um, are probably a lot higher. And those are all falling into the category or the bucket of toxic masculine traits. I think that when we look at this idea of what the toxic masculine is, we shouldn't really be looking at 
what is exclusive to the masculine and what is toxic to the masculine because it's my opinion that the feminine and the masculine work really good in tandem together. And the toxicity comes from when one of those two traits are missing and the other one has to overcome the other because we're missing one of the two. And when the two work together though, we have something that is so beautiful that can help people flourish throughout their entire lives. So anyway, guys, I hope that this makes sense. I hope that this video did serve you well. If it did, hit that like button, subscribe if you are new. Um, yeah, write down in the comments your ideas. We'll talk more about this type of stuff later on. Hopefully I can get somebody to talk about the feminine. Hopefully I can do another podcast on the masculine. I think that this would have been a good podcast to talk with somebody about, but regardless, got to put something out. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new. We'll talk to you in the next one. Peace out. Goodbye.